Hello, I will talk a little bit about earthquakes, and I will be speaking about United States earthquakes, and specifically about the big one in Southern California. There recently was a warning issued from the governor's office in California that the likelihood of an earthquake had increased in Southern California, and they decided 1% per day was the possibility, 99% chance that it would not occur on any given day, and a 1% chance that it would occur on one of seven days. They figured for about a week ahead of time. There was a greater opportunity for an earthquake to happen on the San Andreas Fault because of some ground motion by the Salton Sea. And the warning has been lifted, but that doesn't mean it's gone away. Instead of 1% per day, now it's about 1% per month. It's still pretty high. Chance 1% every month, so figure about uh, 10 years. There should be some kind of ground motion in Southern California, and it might not just be the San Andreas Fault. It might be the San Andreas with the San Jacinto Fault combined, and uh, that would uh, do some damage because it does go under heavily populated areas. The problems with earthquakes are increased a great deal by the amount of people who live right above the epicenter of the earthquake. If you have a large population, then uh, the chances of survival go down a bit because of the need for water and food and other things following the earthquake. Remember, the shaking probably won't kill you. There's no need to panic. Don't let fear drive your actions. Stay as calm as possible. I know you'll still be a little bit afraid, but that's all right. And I will tell you some more things about the coming big one in Southern California. And we'll take a look at uh, what has happened in the past and what we can expect in the future and what to do before, during, and after the big one. Before the earthquake hits, a few things you might want to think about. First of all, think about moving. Think about getting a different job. If you live in a high-rise condo in downtown Los Angeles and it's an old brick building even though it has been reinforced, there's a possibility the bricks will fall off and certainly the plumbing will be unusable. The elevator will not be usable for the first couple of weeks after the earthquake. You might not have electricity, you might not have water for a couple of weeks. And even when the water's turned back on, it will be brown and uh, not drinkable for a while. So think about that. If you work in an office building, a high-rise building downtown Los Angeles, and it's one of the buildings that sways during an earthquake and you're on one of the upper floors, you're going to feel the motion of the earthquake, the shaking a lot more than people on the ground level. And of course you will also lose your plumbing and electrical uh, facilities for uh, possibly a couple of weeks. And if you are in one of those high rise office buildings on a high floor, even though the building probably will survive the earthquake and it will probably still be standing, even though it might have some broken windows, broken windows, it might not, still, while you are in that office on that high floor and the earthquake is occurring, the file cabinets might fall down on you. If you're in an office where the file cabinet is in position where it could fall over onto you or it could fall against the window, break the window and fall out. Think about moving the furniture around in your office beforehand to prevent damage to yourself or uh, as I said think about getting a different job and do think about moving. If you are in an, uh, a location which has the high shaking, the same amount of shaking as downtown Los Angeles, but you're in an area which has a smaller population, you will be more likely to find some water uh, in the couple of weeks following the earthquake, and you'll probably have access to uh, 
better conditions. Uh, and also, things to think about for supplies, food and water. Since the electricity will be out after the earthquake, uh, whatever's in your refrigerator and freezer is what you will be eating first, so be sure to think ahead of time and have something that uh, you might want to eat quickly or be able to fix on a grill, providing you have a grill and you have uh, maybe some charcoal in storage. You'll want to have supplies for a couple of weeks. That includes a tent and uh, I, I suggest having a magnifying glass so in case you have to light a fire. I won't explain how to do it here but um, if you don't have matches or if the matches got wet a magnifying glass will come in handy also. Have a fire extinguisher. Uh, most of the people who were killed in the San Francisco quake were killed by the fire that followed the quake. If you live in a building that has natural gas piped into it you might want to think about either having the natural gas turned off and live on electricity or uh, get certainly get the earthquake gas meter, the earthquake resistant gas meter that uh, could save your life. Medicines, if you have uh, some need for a particular medication, have that on hand. Um, an out-of-town contact. Let everyone in your family uh, or friends know contact this person in this other city. Like if you live in Los Angeles and you have a friend in Chicago, uh, let that friend be the contact. Tell the friend I'm, I'm going to have you as a contact in case there's an earthquake or a natural disaster here. And every member of your family will have uh, that person's number. And in case, uh, let's say you are at work and um, your wife or husband is at home with the baby and the other child is in school. When the earthquake happens, you'll all be in separate places, but you can call the contact number and say, I'm all right, uh, I am at this location, and then the contact number can uh, tell the other person. Because probably when you are in a violent earthquake, if you pick up the phone to dial someone around you, you won't get a dial tone. If you hold on long enough, you will get a dial tone. But the person you're trying to call might be trying to call someone else. So it's uh, the phones, local phones, uh, can be a problem following an earthquake. So have an out of town contact that everybody in your family or friends knows about. Um, a solar battery charger. They make solar battery chargers and whether you use it for your uh, cell phone or whether you use it for uh, radio, you, you want to have a radio handy that you can keep in contact with what's going on in the news. But a solar battery charger might be a good idea. Blankets, you will need blankets and also remember when you have survived the quake and you walk outside you are a first responder and you're going to need blankets for any people you pull out of piles of rubble. You'll want to have uh, tissues and toilet paper. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned bandages. A porta potty. The facilities will not be usable for a while following the earthquake if it's a big one. Now if it's a 6 or even 6.5 chances are you'll still have uh, water and electricity and Red Cross will be there very quickly to help you out. But when it's an 8, 7.5 or 8, that's a different animal and it will do a lot of damage and there will be people who need assistance, medical assistance and so on. So be prepared for yourself, for your family, for your friends and for those people you don't even know who might be needing help to crawl out from underneath something. So that's what you do before an earthquake. The safest place to be during an earthquake is in a single family residence. If you are laying in bed, turn over onto your belly, get into a crawling position if possible on your hands and knees. Get into a push-up position if you can't get into a crawling position right away because of the great shaking. It is
is easier to crawl out of a pile of rubble if you're in a crawling position rather than laying on your back and your chances of survival are better if debris hits you on the back rather than hits you in the face. Teach your children to count one, two, three, and you can do the same one, two, three, four. If you count up to 30 during the earthquake, it's a pretty big earthquake. If you count up to 40, it's probably at least a six, maybe much bigger. And if you count up to 60, it might even be a 7.5 or an 8 or greater magnitude quake. It will be very big. Counting gives the kids something to do other than scream. And if you have real small children, toddlers, teach them to say earthquake, earthquake, go away, come again another day. That way it gives them the feeling they have some control over the earthquake. Keep the interior doors open. If you have a closed door, and the earthquake damages the, jo the door jam, you won't be able to get the door open without uh, making a lot of noise and maybe frightening some people. Places not to be do not be in an underground garage. If you're getting ready to drive into an underground garage and you feel the earth shaking, stop your car. Don't go into an underground parking area under an apartment building or don't go into a parking garage that's uh, just a building made for parking floor after floor, 10 floors high with nothing but cars parked in there. Those structures are not likely to survive a really big quake unless they have been specifically designed to be earthquake resistant. If you are in a brick building, stay inside the brick building until the shaking stops because bricks will be falling in front of the door, but get out of the brick building. Chances are the building itself will remain standing during the quake, but the bricks of the building will fall off onto the street. Do not drive onto a bridge if the earth is shaking. Do not drive into a tunnel if the earth is shaking. Do not get onto a metro rail or subway if the earth is shaking. And good luck. You probably will survive the shaking, the shaking, the shaking, the shaking. After the quake has stopped, stop shaking. Wait about a half a minute, maybe a minute. See if it starts shaking again. There will probably be a big aftershock very shortly after the first tremor. And as soon as the shaking seems to have stopped for a couple of minutes, get your family. If you're inside, get outside. Meet with your neighbors, find out if everyone's okay. By the way, to get outside, you might need a tire iron or a uh, crowbar, something that uh, will help you get the door open because it's very possible that the door jam will be damaged and the door will not open for you. Even when it's unlocked, you might have to go out the windows, whatever is necessary. Get outside and survey the damage and see if anyone needs to be dug out of rubble. You are a first responder at this point. And get together with your neighbors and start planning what you're going to be doing in the weeks ahead. And that will be a, a different story for every situation. Some people live in apartments, some in single family residences, and some uh, might be in offices in high rise buildings during the middle of the day. But uh, you do want to get outside and you want to get away from anything made of brick because there will be a lot of aftershocks and also get away from the telephone poles that have the electric wires at, uh, at least on one side of many of the major streets. So protect yourself and be aware of Executive Order 13603 that's the Na National Defense Resources Preparedness Act, which is uh, something that, that involves homeland security. Um, FEMA will come to the rescue probably within 48 hours, and uh, the Red Cross will be there very quickly, and they will have things like uh, coffee and donuts and blankets, the Red Cross will, and FEMA will actually have checks, money. Um, they will help you get uh, started uh, rebuilding or whatever it is you need to do, they will assist you. 
But that Executive Order 13603, basically what it says, by the way, it might never be enforced. It's possible that uh, there's no plan to enforce it. But if it is enforced, it will be enforced by Homeland Security using some government agency. It could be a military agency or it could be uh, any government agency that happens to be handy. And it does give the federal government the right to seize items, commodities, from private citizens for redistribution to other citizens during national emergencies. An eight-magnitude quake in Southern California would bring major casualties to Los Angeles, and that includes Hollywood, also the cities in the San Fernando Valley and Los Angeles County. Also shaking would be the high desert area with communities such as Lancaster, Palmdale, and Pear Blossom receiving damage. Barstow would be heavily hit by an eight magnitude quake on uh, the San Andreas Fault in Southern California, as would Bakersfield. Las Vegas actually would shake a lot during such a quake, but probably would not suffer any major casualties. If you go shopping a couple of hours after the shaking has stopped, you probably will find the supermarket shelves are already bare with nothing left to buy except maybe some shoe polish and vanilla extract. Looters will begin to appear a couple or three days after the first major shaking. Be prepared. Uh, be prepared to take care of yourself and be on your own for the first uh, couple of weeks. Uh, by being on your own, I mean you and your neighbors as a group will probably be taking care of yourself for the first couple of weeks. Now, if you do not plan ahead and if you're not prepared, remember they cannot blame you. It was San Andreas' fault. Thank you for watching.